we are a little over two years old and our sponsor is the government of India. The essential mandate of the organization is to provide every resident of India with a unique identity and the ability to authenticate oneself anytime, anywhere. And the primary objective was one, that 40% of people in India don't have a proof of ID. So provide this to them as well as to everyone else who wants one. And second was that uh, facilitate and improve the social security benefit uh, distribution. I had a passport, I have a driving license, I have a health insurance card, but uh, the poor people, in particularly in developing countries, may not have any of these. So they are at the mercy of uh, the system. They're not able to prove themselves. And if they're not able to prove, I mean, they might be manifestly poor and clearly entitled for, let's say, an unemployment allowance, but uh, the system considers them invisible because they are not able to prove who they are. So to be visible to the system, to get access to entitlements which the government offers, you need an ID. The project is designed to enroll all of 1.2 billion people who reside in India. This is not going to happen over a period of one or two years. So we are looking at 600 million by 2014 and uh, currently as we speak we have crossed 120 million and we have reached a stable state where we are able to enroll a million a day. We actually have been agnostic towards applications of this ID with one exception which is financial inclusion and that's because we thought that this is a great opportunity where the UID would be touching base in some perspective with every resident in the country to enroll them. And at that point of time, since the data that we were collecting and the information we were gathering about the individual happens to be quite the same as required for opening a bank account, we partnered with banks and any resident who while enrolling for UID says she wants a bank account, gets a bank account, no questions asked. That's the system that we've tied in. So, you know, when at some point of time, everyone in India has a ID issued by us, they would also be having a bank account should they want one. 84% people who have enrolled into the UID have asked for bank accounts. This includes uh, people for whom it's been a dream to get a bank account and they thought that they could never get one. It also includes people who might already be having multiple accounts and just like the idea of a UID linked account or this could just be people who are testing us to see that uh, do they really deliver. We have this case study of Ram who actually is a wage, under, wage earner under the National Rural Employment Guarantee program of the Government of India and what we found was that uh, it used to take him a day's journey on foot as well as on a public transport to go to the nearest bank branch to get his wages every cycle and the opportunity cost there was uh, and the transaction cost uh, was over 150 rupees or three dollars to get wages of about 12 dollars and uh, with UID and financial inclusion in the banks coming together, it should be possible for Ram to get his wages in his village without putting an entire day and losing his earnings for the day and wages for the day to access uh, you know, the remuneration. We haven't experienced resistance from residents and there's actually been a no demand issue. Wherever we have an enrollment center, you will see long queues there. And uh, in fact, the demand supply issue is the supply being able to meet the demand. But uh, at the same time, there have been, I mean, India is a democracy and a very robust one. So there have been concerns, say, from civil society organizations on issues relating to privacy, issues relating to security. And there's only one way to kind of uh, uh, 
address those concerns, which is through an open dialogue. The way the UID works is that uh, it uh, identifies each individual as a unique, not on the basis of your photograph, not on the basis of what's your name or what's your address, but on the basics of your biometric attributes, which are believed to be largely non-duplicable. And each time that you use the UID, the only way you use it is that you authenticate yourself biometrically on an online system. So it should be the most secure system and a foolproof one that exists today. We follow a minimalist approach. So the data that we collect is bare minimal and it's quite the same as you need for booking a railway ticket in India. Uh, the number that we give, which is the ID 12 digits, is random and there's no intelligence behind it. We don't track, we don't profile. In fact, the entry into the UID itself is demand driven and voluntary. It's not mandatory and we don't give any information out. Whatever database we have is a one way traffic and uh, we only reply in terms of yes and no's. Nobody has any access to our database. So we believe that uh, we've taken uh, good care about uh, security and privacy of uh, resident data. Everyone's familiar with India's growth story. And wherever there is growth, generally inequality starts increasing. So a key agenda of successive governments uh, in India has been what we call inclusive growth. So as India gets more prosperous, the government has more tax revenues. It has the ability to take care of those who are not part of this growth story. And what this is translating into is more and more money coming into social security benefits chain, which currently is uh, as much as uh, 60 billion US dollars per annum. And uh, five years ago, it was 12 billion and we expect in the next three years it will double from 60 billion to over 120 billion so this is serious money and uh, more than the money is that for there to be stability in the system and for our growth to be sustainable the poor must benefit from it and the UID is perceived to be an instrument to ensure that the poor get included in the mainstream and are part of India's growth story.